in the Diamond Lane, you just heard some Made in Manitoba music. Manitoba is a music hotbed, and in an effort to highlight the talent of Winnipeg guitarists, the Winnipeg Classical Guitar Society created the four-part concert series, Frets Alive. The third installment, titled Crossover Concert, takes place this weekend, and I'm joined by Rodrigo Munoz, one of the performers to tell us more. Good afternoon, Rodrigo. Good afternoon. It's such a pleasure to have you. I know you've been here before. I have been a couple times. Yeah, it's, it's great to have you back. I, I mean, in my mind, uh, Rodrigo, you're the, you're the perfect performer for this concert. You know, a, okay. a classical guitarist who fronts one of the best-known Latin bands here in Winnipeg, in Winnipeg Papa yeah. Mambo. That's right, yeah. Well, what can you tell us about this idea of being a crossover artist? I love uh, uh, being able to do both uh, the classical and the pop, I guess you could call the other stuff, you know, the, the jazz and the Latin jazz mm-hmm. and what, what have you. I love, I love, I love that because it's, it's, uh, it, they're quite different in many ways. I mean, there, there are a lot of similar similarities, but there's also a lot of difference. Uh, um, one thing is that it, when I perform classical, or I, I love it. I love the music. I love the music, uh, the classical more than the. Uh, the other stuff, I'm sorry to say to <laughs> people who... <laughs> the big you know, reveal. I really love the pop stuff and the Latin and, and the jazz, but I love the, the classical more. Uh, I think it's just uh, better. <laughs> so so we just heard you performing a little bit of classical music. That was that was some Mozart, right? You were That's on the guitar. Right. Who were you performing with on that recording? Uh, on on violin is Boyd McKenzie, and on cello is uh, Carol, Carolyn N- Nagelberg. Uh, we were talking off the air while we were listening to it, and I, I so loved the textures. The guitar with the violin with the cello, it just produces such a wonderful romantic sound. What do you enjoy about that particular trio? Well, it, it sounds big, you know. Yeah, it does. It, 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 uh, it's only three people, but because you have, uh, you know, you, you got the low end with the cello, and then you got the high end with the violin playing the melodies, and then, but you, the guitar adds a lot of the harmony. And it also uh, a lot of texture. Yeah, it fills yeah. out the sound in a certain That's way. Right. So it, make, it sounds bigger than it, it, it is, you know, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, we're going to get to the program uh, for the, tomorrow's concert. It is indeed tomorrow that tomorrow, takes place. Yes. I know you you just came from a rehearsal. How did the rehearsal go? It went really great. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Looking yeah. forward to hearing more about the show. But I, I'm curious, as such a busy performer in the city, I mean, you're, you're all over the place. Between mm-hmm. Papa Mambo, between Trio Bembe, and between everything else that you're doing, do you get to play classical guitar as much as you'd like? Uh, it kind of comes in, in, uh, in waves you really? know, for, yeah, yeah. for a while. It, it, that, that's one of the things that I like about it, too, is that uh, uh, there are certain periods in, in the year where where there's, you know, like in the summer, for instance, there's a lot of festivals and stuff where I do a lot of the, the, the pop and the Latin yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And then uh, when it gets a little cooler, then the, uh, the series, the, the more classical stuff begins. And then uh, uh, it fits perfectly. It goes back and forth. Um, when, you, when you look at those, those two different kind of styles, like be it, be it the pop side or the classical side, yeah. what similarities do, fi- do you find between the two? Well, I mean, it's music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it, 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 it for me, it, in it, with Papa Mambo, it's this. The the similar similarities is that it's in Papa Mambo. It's all arranged. Okay, so it's all yeah. written now. It's all arranged. Yeah, of course, you got to sort of learn how to play, especially for the rhythm session. Learn how to play in the style. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, it's all very well arranged. You know, there's no uh, sort of jamming it out or, or you know, do, there's a little, there's pockets where we do a little bit of improvisation, mm-hmm. but it's all very, very structured that uh, way. Structure, very structured. Yeah. So that way, similar to classical music, which is a lot more structured. In, in generally, no, it, it, it definitely is, yeah. and and to me, that's one of the things where very often when we're talking with classical artists, they say, you know, I, I don't really get the opportunity to improvise that much. This way, you kind of get to do a little bit of both, going back and forth between, you know, the pop, Latin, jazz side of yeah. things and the classical side. Absolutely. Uh, just to kind of flesh this idea out a little bit more, because it is titled crossover concert, and, and yeah. this is something that I've always, you know, tried to figure out myself. But just in short, we've kind of got two different styles on the the crossover side. There's the the flamenco guitar, that's and then there's Latin jazz. Okay. Well, what can you tell us about those two? Okay, well, for this concert specifically, yeah. we, I, for, unfortunately, we don't have too much of the Latin jazz. Uh, uh. Uh, but we do have, actually, I'm, I'm very much, like my part, my second session that I'm doing, very much in the classical. Uh, I mean, you could talk about 
piazzola being a, sort of a, on the edge of... Uh, he's like that cusp, right? Where yes. it sounds like, where are we? Are we classical? Is this... I mean, he's so influenced, in my mind, by his upbringing and the music that he heard around him, right? Exactly. Uh, and and, and that, uh, that was one of the difficult things about piazzola. When I was looking for uh, some of his uh, music, and then there were so many, like, every every single band or, or, or ensemble played it different because huh. I was like, uh, I want something so I can arrange, you know, and, and, then, and, then, and I figure out because Piazzolla himself, whenever, he, I mean, he did write things out, yeah. but then when he went out with this group, he was a little more, more flexible, you know, yeah. he they kind of a more, sort of on the, kind of a jazz uh, musician. Yeah. So that's why it's difficult to find a one exact uh, version to work from. That, so that, that, that's pretty cool. What, what else do you have on the program? There's the piazzola. What else are you going to be performing tomorrow? Well, tomorrow uh, we begin with uh, some baroque music. Ah, nice. By Ernst Gubbly Baron, who's a, a lutenist. Yeah. Before the guitar. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And uh, writ, he wrote uh, Primo Concerto in three movements: uh, Allegro, Adagio, and Vivace. And that's a lovely work, uh, very very baroque style, mm-hmm. uh, b- beautiful melodies, you know, mm-hmm. very rich. Uh, and then we do the uh, the Mozart, which lovely. is a, it's a long piece. It's about fourteen minutes long actually. It's in two movements, Allegro and then Minuet. Lovely. And that's an arrangement actually. Nice. By a fellow named Poro or Poro. Actually, his name is Poré, Jean Pierre Poré, yeah. but he changed his name. To porro, to Italianize. Oh, fascinating! Because it was kind of the thing to do back yeah. then. He's from the same time of Mozart, so he was around. And we heard a little snippet of that to begin. That's right. You're going to be performing with the same players, correct? That's that's right. Oh, this is outstanding, and and, and it sounds like a, an absolutely great show. Uh, I want to ask you, um, just lastly, um, why do you hope audiences go to the show? What, what do you hope they take away from it? Well, I hope I hope they 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 enjoy the music very much. Uh, you know, we've been practicing and getting this all together, and I hope they. Uh, it's just the beauty of 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 the sounds and the melodies and the harmonies in, and and uh, and it's uh, in, you know in our age of uh, technology, uh, uh, there's so much. Uh, technology around us all the time, yeah. uh, with uh, especially with uh, uh, in, even in music, you know, there's so much uh, yeah, digital work, digital that way. work and stuff like that. This is uh, uh, in a, a very uh, dry uh, in a way. Uh, just the, the the instruments acoustically. Just sit down and just listen and... Just re- enjoy the music. That's right. Yeah, just be there and be in the moment, which is such a exactly. wonderful thing. Exactly. Uh, Rodrigo, thanks for coming by the studio this afternoon. Oh. Thank you very much. Rodrigo Munoz is one of two Manitoba guitarists, the other being Philippe Meunier, performing as part of the Crossover Concert, the third installment of the Frets Alive concert series presented by the Winnipeg Classical Guitar Society. The concert takes place Saturday, March 24th, 8 p.m. at the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Winnipeg. Tickets are just $15. Uh, If you're on the fence about going to the show, we're going to hear a little bit more of Rodrigo's playing. Rodrigo, what what are we going to hear in this outro? This is Libertango by Astor Piazzolla. Fantastic. Here we go. <laughs> 